Hello, I'm Andrew G. I'm a Partner Technical Specialist in the Storage Division of IBM Technology here in New Zealand. What I'd like to take you through today is what we will call Cyber Resilience 101. You may have heard IBM has talk about a tool called the Cyber Resilience Assessment Tool, and uh, that's a pretty thorough um, interview of some 200 questions over a couple of hours uh, with multiple people in your, in your uh, company. And we take that away, uh, analyze it, generate a report, and come back and go through it with, with you for around about an hour. But if you'd like to get started really, really quickly and do a self-assessment test, a very quick one, here's a good starting place. So have a look at this website. Uh, this is the New Zealand site with some, uh, it's what we call our pricing page um, for New Zealand. Have a look at the URL up here. And uh, what it shows you are the various members of the Flash Systems family or tape drives. You can just click through and look at, you know, here are my tape drive options. Here's my Flash System NVMe, one new high. And I can hit comparison so I can compare this, for example. I've done a, a quick comparison up here. And I've compared the Flash System 5300, which is one new tool, NVMe, with IBM's unique business value in the Flash Core modules. And I've compared that with a 5045, which is the SAS attached, uh, uh, SAS based controller, should I say. And you can see this is 65 terabytes, this is 45 terabytes, but we have onboard compression on the drives itself. And so we get 45 terabytes uh, after two to one compression on this case. And you can see the features that are available, uh, the performance uh, from NVMe versus SAP, how many IOPS we can get. And the, this is the baby over on the side here. It doesn't have very many um, things that are, are covered. Um, but that's another little part of the, um, the home page. What I want to do is show you the um, entry cyber resilience assessment. And you can pick that up over here and take the assessment. So you see at first glance that this is the NIST framework on the side here, the five categories of identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. And they're color-coded, and we've color-coded our sectors. One thing I've found in IT over many years is that people don't ad like admitting they don't know. They'll try and obfuscate or bluster or, or, or something. But if you don't know, you don't know. It's as simple as that. And we give that as an option here. So for example, if we just run through these questions, you'll see how this framework is built. So how exposed to risk do you think you are? Well, I, I, I don't know. So I can either click, I don't know, or I can drag the bar across. So I could click on quite, I don't know. So now it's expanded the section and it's doing the identify and the protect stages, which are these two stages here. Very, very high level, two questions in each one. Three questions, sorry, in the second. So, is there a process in place to manage and prioritize your IT, internal IT resources? No. So what it's immediately done is generate a spider graph. And you can see it still has the five categories for the NIST framework, and it's given me a score. Now, ideal is 90. The 100% is a fine gray line around the outside. Uh, that will be interesting if we can ever get there. But it's given me zero in the middle is bad, 90 to 100 is good. So depending on how we answer these questions, we will build the spider graph as we go. To what extent has risk management strategy been developed with a defined RPO and RTO? Oh, I know it, I've done that. So you can see immediately my score improves to 56. On the protect side, have I got identity authentication access controls? Everybody thinks that they are thoroughly covered in that area, but you see that only gives you 27%. How well are you implementing data security managers for protecting sensitive data at rest, in transit, and in use? So most people have got data at rest encryption. Have you got it while it's in transit, and have you got it while it's in use? Is your um, data protect, uh, encrypted in memory, for example? Oh, no, maybe not. But it's given you a little score. To what extent are the procedures to regularly conduct audits and maintain system securely, or oh, once a year? 
So how often do you run vulnerability scans and penetration testing? And uh, we'd normally say, I think, rarely, but we'll go for I don't know, and let's see what it does. Do you ensure the continued stability and effectiveness of your security policies through regular maintenance testing and review? Oh yes, we, we, we do that all the time. How well can you detect dormant, no, detect dormant and active threats? Now here is an interesting point. It's a dormant threat. How do you know you, that you haven't got something in there already infected in your backups? So even if you restore your backup, it's going to trigger again. So can, how well can you detect them? Maybe not at all. How are you implementing real-time data security monitoring to detect? Oh yes, we can see if we're getting attacked on the network, no problem, we'll say, thoroughly, we'll say. So we're thinking we're able to detect them. How effectively do you manage response plans and resources to, to address the security incidents? Have you identified your roles? Have you identified communication? How are you going to contain it? Or not at all. And how well are you implementing real-time data security monitoring? I'm just picking numbers at random here, just building this spider graph. How long would it take you to make your company operational again, do you know? So the average to recover a company is 23 days. That is an awful long time if you can't trade. And that's the average. So some people who've got a lot of security measures, a lot of automation in place can do it in a matter of hours. Other companies I've spoken with have been trying to recover some things up to six months later. You'll find now that uh, attackers will take out the backups first. So the ideal trigger points are around about 89 days into a backup. And because by the time you realize there's a quarter gone and those backups have expired, and if you need to go back to them, you won't be able to because they're encrypted. So the backup is actually quite often the first vector What you should do is work out what we call, what is your minimum viable company, an MVC. These are the parts of my company that I need to get back as soon as possible and protect those through regular snapshots and mutable copies, etc. Other things you can bring back online in order of uh, prioritization. So do you know how long it would take to get your company operational again? So have you tried doing a full restore? Have you got the capability of doing a full restore? I don't know. Let's have a look at the questions. How effectively do you test and maintain your backup data recovery procedures, including contingency plans? How effectively can you measure, ensure the integrity of your backup and prevent malware during recovery? How can you effectively ensure the backup copies are malware free? So do you have a clean room? This is an area that we're seeing far more interest in nowadays. You know, whether you have a dedicated server off the network and you restore, and you periodically restore and test. You don't do it once a month, you're doing small things every day, bringing backups right, in this area, in this area, in this area, each day restoring it. Can you do it? Yes, no. Have you got a scanner that's going through those files and looking for malware? How well do you utilize the test environment? So if you have one, are you testing your backups, etc.? Well, we do some backup testing, we'll do that. So you can see the spider graphs building and are our solutions compliant with industry security standards? I, quite frankly, I don't know. So um, here is the spider gram that we've put out. We're not very good at responding, not very good at recovering. We think we can detect them, etc. And so you can download a PDF here uh, if you want, just fill in your details and um, and a nice little PDF gets generated and we can see where we are on that very, as I say, Cyber Resiliency 101, a very, very quick set of questions to answer. Here are your results, here's your score. Some comments relating to it, and down at the bottom here, we have the scoring key. 
where I, you know, so whether you're uh, immature or highly mature, developing, etc. So these ones are what we pull from our in-depth analysis. So feel free to contact me or your IBM business partners and do a full analysis, but here's one you can get started with. And uh, as I say, you saw how quick that was, a matter of minutes, and we've done something similar, and we end up with a score. And that might be a good benchmark for you, a good starting point. And then you can look at, discuss with your teams, discuss with this, say so, how you want to do things in future. I hope this has been of value to you. My name is Andrew G. My uh, email address, as you saw, is andrew.g at ibm.com. Thank you for listening.